So it finishes then Poland 1, England 1. Uh, taking a look at what that means in regards to the standings now in Group I. England remain top of the table. Of course, they remain unbeaten. Uh, their first points drop, though, of qualifying for Poland, a point uh, that puts them into third. This is a bit of deja vu, Craig, from the old uh, Euro final, when in the fact that you've got England sitting back once again. Well, they didn't sit back, they controlled most of the game. No, but you think that last 10 minutes, you feel like they invited well, their they pressure got... on, and then as a result, you can see the goal which you don't Well, that's right, and they got sloppy because Jordan Pickford got caught on the ball, got charged down, almost ricocheted into his own goal. He had to sprint back to the line, got there with a yard or two to spare. And then just before the goal, Kyle Walker got turned badly. And he really didn't have to get as tight as he did. A drop of the shoulder. That put England on the back foot. They never cleared the ball from there. And Poland scored. But in truth, my one criticism of England would be for all the control they had in the game, they didn't create enough chances. Yeah. I mean, Raheem Sterling, he wasn't alone. But my goodness, how many times he dribbles into the box and then he has to beat the man and then beat him again, then try and beat him again. And by that time, they've got two or three white, white jerseys around it yeah. and nicked the ball away. It, and Jack Grealish, similar. It's frustrating because they had, as you saw, 60, yeah, 70 percent possession. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't create as many chances as I thought. And, but the Harry Kane finish was as yeah. soon as as soon as Poland sat off him, mm -hmm. that was it. Yeah. Because he's one of the best strikers of the ball in the game. But England will qualify. Here's the deal. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. was a huge. That's a huge point for Poland and their fight with Albania. Yeah, it keeps that hopes alive. Critics of Gareth Southgate are saying, why on earth didn't he make substitutes? Didn't well, make any in this game. Hey, hey, the, the, in, in truth, and, and Craig's right. 63% possession for England maybe suggests they they could and, and should have gotten a whole lot more. But when you watch this game, neither goalkeeper outside of the goals really tested, and it it, it felt like neither team created enough to really deserve three points. So though you, you, you talk about the goal from Harry Kane and you talk about um, late, that late twist in, in, in the tail from, from Poland, I, I felt a draw was fair in all honesty. So I, I take nothing from it. And as far as England goes, listen, this is another point towards qualification. They go away to, to San Marino and Andorra, yeah. whoever it is. The, those are, and, and then at home for, for the other two, you expect them to win all four and, and, and qualify rather easily. Southgate caught sitting on his hands. Why? Not making any no, substitutions. No, I, no, I actually don't. I actually don't think so. I think this is a, just betwixt and between. He was very comfortable. Leave it as it is. It was the players that got sloppy. The bigger concern for me is something that I brought up in the Euros was was yeah, England are going to be pretty much perfect in this qualification again, and they smashed Andorra as you'd expect. This was tougher. But is he getting enough with this talented squad going forward? Right. Which was a big question mark, which sounds strange. They got to the final of the Euros, but he never used Sancho much. We hardly saw Foden after his poor early start. And there are other players, and I think that is the question, is when it really comes to the crunch, England against the better teams need to create more chances than they are creating. You know, Grealish is frustrating as well. I don't know what you guys think, but 100 million or not, I don't care. He keeps, he keeps talking about, you know, he's one of the most foul players. And, you know, we saw it again today, he got, he got some rough treatment. But he, 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 for me, he's taking too many touches. Right. I know he's strong. I get that. You don't, but you don't have to do it every time, mm -hmm. right? Lay it off. Quick passes, little one twos, and get round people. He wants to take a touch and another touch, and he wants to invite the defender on, and then ultimately he gives a free kick away or he gets fouled, and he's probably got one of the most, you know, kicked calves in the game. But where's that going to get you? I just think, particularly with the players he's going to play with now at Man City, he can evolve his game from Aston Villa, where he had to hold the ball right. as much as he did to relieve some pressure sometimes. At Manchester City and England, they're dominating games. He doesn't have to be doing that. And I think he, for sure, for club and country, has to quicken up his game. Because, all right, he's winning fouls in the halfway line and whatnot, but that, we're not seeing the best of Jack Grealish whilst he's taking five and six and seven touches and getting fouled. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.